Welcome to the Ohio Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair, and thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are both off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening today, uh, so be sure to sign up for uh, additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and it will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Ohio. I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter now. Hi there, um, my name is Lauren Flanagan. I am the Regional Admissions Manager from Michigan Tech. Let me just share my screen here. All right. So thanks for, for watching and listening. Appreciate you being here. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit today about Michigan Tech, who we are, what it takes to apply and get into Michigan Tech, and uh, we'll certainly leave some time at the end for, for questions. So, so what kind of student comes to Michigan Tech? Who do you have to be? Well, you can really be anybody, but if you want to know what our typical student looks like, on the proverbial paper, we have about 7,000 total students, about 5,400 undergraduate students. Average GPA of our freshmen this year was about 3.78, and average SAT was around 1260. So um, that's what the grades and test scores look like, but, but we know you are so much more than just those numbers. So what kind of uh, experience do you want to have? What kind of things do you want to study? Um, and we'll talk about those kinds of things. Some things I love about Michigan Tech one, we prepare students very well for what's next after college. Um, some of that is evidenced by our average starting salary, just over 66,000 per year, fresh out of college. So not a bad living. Um, and we get you there by offering small classes, really hands-on experiential learning environment um, where your classes are taught by professors typically. So it's really kind of that small school feel um, that a lot of students really thrive in. Um, I mentioned experiential learning. So at Michigan Tech, we offer over 120 different areas of study. A lot of folks know us as an engineering school, and absolutely there's truth to that, um, but we do have lots of other majors in computing, business, the health professions, um, a lot of lab sciences, forestry. Um, we really run the gamut. The common thread with all of our majors is that you will have opportunities to get your hands dirty, sometimes literally, in the work. Study abroad research, senior design projects, a unique program called Enterprise where you work on a team of students for a year or two, um, essentially running a mini company um, and solving real problems for real companies. So um, you're gonna graduate from tech with an experience to list on your resume, probably more than one, a whole resume of experiences. Um, and that's part of why our students uh, do so well in the job market out there. Um, I do want to cover how to apply and get in because I know um, wherever you are in the high school journey or even middle school, that's probably on your mind. Um, the nice thing is at Michigan Tech, the application process is simple. It is free always. It's an online application, of course. And um, typically, well, as of now, we're really just looking at your grades and the classes you've taken in high school. We don't require an essay for most of our majors. Some do, but most don't. Um, and really we're looking for around a B average student. So I mentioned earlier, our average freshman has around a 3.8. You don't have to have a 3.8 to get in. You just need that, that B average about a 3.0. It's rolling admissions. The application opens up in June every year. So as soon as junior year is over, you can head home for the summer and start applying to college if you want. Don't have to do that quickly, but you can. Um, and you'll hear back within two to three weeks. So I mentioned um, around that B average. So 3.0 is kind of an easy one to remember, but we can go a little lower depending on how well you've challenged yourself in high school. Right now we are not requiring SAT or ACT for admission. If you've got scores, great, you can submit them. We'll use them for other things like scholarships, um, but you do not need an SAT or ACT for admission. What does cost look like? Well, if you don't live in Michigan, which is where we're located, um, you will pay a non-Michigan resident tuition. And so total cost for this year, there's a bunch of numbers on this screen here, but total cost for the year is just over 51,000 per year. That's what um, I hate to say, but we call the sticker price. Very few families actually pay 
that 51,000 out of pocket. We've got loads of scholarships and financial aid opportunities available to you, um, ranging from you know, our National Scholars Program, which is about um, $10,000 per year up to 16,000 per year. We have our Leading Scholars Award, which is a little more competitive, but it's a chance at a full ride. Um, and we have lots of other scholarship opportunities as well that you can apply for. So don't let any colleges sticker price or price that's on their website um, influence your decision to apply, just apply. We will help you figure out the financial aid and scholarships from there. Um, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts of admissions and, and financial aid. We have way more to talk about when it comes to that, but we're just sort of opening the conversation right now. Um, what's fun about Michigan Tech? What do you do when you're a Michigan Tech Husky? Well, you go to athletic events. We've got Division II athletics, with the exception of our Division I men's hockey program. We also have a um, brand new and very exciting esports program that is actually set to start um, broadcasting their competitions very, very soon here in the next um, few weeks, actually. We're very excited about that. Um, oh, and by the way, you can, oh, let me go back up. You can go to any athletic event for free as a Michigan Tech student. So if you're not an athlete and not already there to play or to participate, you can be a fan for free. It's part of your tuition. You can experience everything Michigan Tech has to offer um, at really no additional cost. We are located in the absolutely beautiful Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, my background here is a, um, a warmer weather shot of what you see on the screen with this snow border here. But um, our campus is right on the water. If you've never been to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, um, it's, it's a bucket list item for a lot of people you need to, need to visit, even if Michigan Tech doesn't end up being your college. But you can ski on our ski hill for free. You can go to performing arts events. You can use our golf course. All of that's included. So what makes Michigan Tech different, fun, unique? Um, Winter Carnival. So it's one of our favorite annual traditions. Up in the UP, we do get a lot of snow. It's part of who we are. And our students have a blast with it. Um, competing in human ice bowling and snow statue building competitions and staying up all night to build the snow statues. So it's a ton of fun. Broom ball is another signature um, intramural sport that we offer. It's kind of like hockey, but no skates, you just wear shoes. No um, hockey sticks, you use brooms. So it's a lot of fun, You no experience required. So please play broom ball if you come to tech. Creative Nation, so about 10% of our student body comes from outside the US and we're really proud of that. They bring amazing perspectives to our campus community and we really love to celebrate the culture, the music, the food, yes, of course, the food. So every year we do our Parade of Nations um, and it's just a really, really rich celebration of who we are as a community. Homecoming, I know a lot of colleges have homecoming. Um, we take full advantage of our location and do all kinds of activities on the water, including cardboard boat racing. Does not always go well, but they have fun with it, as you can see. So um, it really is a tight-knit community. And, and one thing that's, that's unique and different about tech is that everyone's coming from far away. Most students are around eight hours away from home. So no one's going home on weekends, they're staying around, they're participating in clubs. We have more than 240 clubs and organizations. So it becomes your family almost right away because you almost don't have a choice. And so it's a really unique, unique environment for a state school with everyone being from so far from home. There is lots more to share about tech, but I want you to hear about two of my other favorite colleges, Grand Valley and Saginaw Valley. Um, but here is my contact information. So please reach out to me. I am your go-to person for all things Michigan Tech when you have questions. So please let me know and good luck to you. Thank you so much for being here. I will um, unshare my screen and let Libby take over or whoever, who's next, I forget. <laughs> Okay, can you see my screen okay? Awesome, thank you. Great job, Lauren. My name's Libby. I am an assistant director of admissions at Grand Valley and I'm excited to talk to you all today. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so Grand Valley is a mid-sized public university. We have about 23,000 students at Grand Valley. 
And we do have over 300 areas of interest. So there's a lot to choose from as far as majors, minors, certificates, badges, even uh, 40 different masters and doctorate programs. But what we're best known for as far as undergraduate majors go are health professions. We have a lot to choose from. We are in the hub of West Michigan's medical area. So there's a lot going on there within our health programs, but then our business college, our Seedman College of Business is very well known as well. There's over uh, 13 different majors to choose from. Lastly, engineering and computing. We have a lot of interesting programs in those fields. And so those are our top three. But like I said, there's, there's so many unique programs and areas you can focus in at Grand Valley. All right, so we like to think we're the biggest small school you will find for a number of reasons. Our average class size is only 26. And so with 23,000 in total enrollment, about 20,000 are undergraduates. So you're going to get those small class sizes. You're going to get um, faculty that teach your classes you will really get personal interaction with your professors. And I think that's the best thing that sets us apart from other colleges is those relationships and how faculty are really, uh, they're, they're pushing for you, they're rooting for you is what I was trying to find. They are there uh, to help you inside and outside the classroom. So I like to think we're that big school feel with that many students, over 20,000. Um, but still really small and intimate when it comes to your classroom setting and that interaction you have academically. All right. So, oh goodness. There we go. Um, our mid-sized university is located in a small town called Allendale, but it's just outside the second largest city in Michigan, Grand Rapids. So we're just 12 miles from that huge city atmosphere. And so that's where we think we have the best of both worlds, of course. You've got that nice, intimate town of Allendale, a large campus, with lots of activity and hustle and bustle of the students for you to join this community, get involved, have a great experience during the weekday and weekends but also you're just close to so much. Um, if you go the opposite direction of Grand Rapids and you head west of Allendale, you'll hit Lake Michigan in just a few miles. So yeah, we're right in between a lot of great uh, activities and adventures for our students. We offer a liberal education focus. So these are educational tools that all employers want you to have in a changing world. We know from this past year, our world is definitely changing and surprising us constantly. So our liberal education really allows our students to know what employers want, regardless of what industry you go into. So you'll get those presentation skills, group skills, definitely working with students that um, are different from you and collaborating and having challenges and having successes uh, with that liberal education focus. The critical thinking is huge um, and, and working in a di diverse world is also huge as well. So just think of the university requirements at Grand Valley as a breadth of creating your long lasting career, but your major requirements are really giving you the depth of your industry. We also offer a lot of organizations to get involved in. We encourage all of our students to join at least one club that's focused on your industry or your major of interest. So if you're an advertising and public relations major, there's actually a long list of clubs and organizations to join um, just on that major. Um, but then we also want you to join some fun clubs. Uh, we have faith-based organizations. We have a very strong Greek life on campus, political organizations. Then there's the fashion club, the photography club. So we just want you to get involved and have some great experiences 
Uh, I've heard wonderful things about our pre-med club, just so you can get more involved in your major. All right, we are division two, um, and we can say for athletics, we are the best division two program in the United States. We also have one of the largest club sports programs, and we have a very strong intramural program. So if you want to meet other people and have some fun, join an intramural, anything from dodgeball to table tennis uh, to some more serious um, intramurals, uh, more competitive, I should say, with like soccer and basketball. Um, and club sports being as strong as they are, we have programs like rowing uh, and hockey, um, rugby. So there's really something for everybody with one of the largest club sport programs in the country. All right, we're also a very safe community that has a ton of resources. So if you attend Grand Valley, you can take advantage of as many of these resources as possible. Um, our tutoring center is great. Our disability support resources center is excellent as well. We offer free counseling and a lot of different activities and resources within our university counseling center. And then think about the arts activities. We're doing some virtual theater programming right now. Um, recreation and wellness is also really strong at Grand Valley too. So there's really something for everybody. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, it works this time. <laughs> so um, also what may make Grand Valley unique are these three areas. So let's talk about them a little bit more. Um, Research. We have an office of undergraduate research, so students know where to go to get connected with faculty and projects. So students in public health right now are studying COVID, um, the impact of persistent stress on our students' health and wellness. We also have some students in our psychology department that are exploring like the strongest psychological factors of who will get the vaccine and our, how our way of thinking determines how we view the pandemic. So some really interesting stuff. And then we have research going on in non-STEM related majors like how black women are represented in popular US magazines. So there's really something for everybody in research. I encourage you just like Lauren talked about with Michigan Tech, research is a great way to get involved in your industry and get more experience. Uh, so just know that Grand Valley has a lot of resources for research. We're also nationally ranked for study abroad participation, and we have over 4,000 programs. So there's really something for everybody and a lot of scholarship opportunities. Last but not least, going back to our location, being in West Michigan and just outside of Grand Rapids, there are so many great internship and practical resources within your career, uh, within your industry. It doesn't hurt that we're also halfway uh, between Detroit and Chicago. We're about three hours from both cities. So our local network is really strong as well as our national network. All right, work with me here. I'm sorry, I think maybe my um, mouse is dying on me. There we go. <laughs> So um, let's just switch gears and I'm about to wrap up here in just a moment. Let's talk a little bit about um, cost. We're in the lower third of the 15 public universities in Michigan as far as cost goes. So um, that is kind of our breakdown of pricing. If you're not from Michigan, you have this non-Michigan tuition, but we have a lot of scholarship options. So please keep that in mind that Grand Valley has a lot of ways we can look at merit-based scholarships to help you pay for school, as well as scholarships based on other credentials, um, as well as financial aid. So there's really something for everybody and we can walk you through that process uh, and get very specific with you to help you make your final decisions. So yeah, a lot of our out-of-state students um, can get their, their dollars down to in-state tuition plus more. So let's just wrap up with the application process. We are test optional for fall 21 and 22. Your first step, of course, is to apply. And we have this holistic admission approach where we review your transcript, application, and test score if you submit it. 
and we'll send you an admission decision in less than a month. So if you are a junior, you can apply this summer and we'll start reviewing applications in the fall. Our application does not have an essay, but we do have some short answer questions. We're really trying to get to know you better. If you've had any obstacles or achievements you've encountered in high school, we would love to hear all of that, just so we can really get the full picture on, on where you're coming from. All right, last but not least, you can visit campus in person or virtually. If you see that gvsu.oncampustour.com, that is a website you can pull up on your mobile device when you get to campus. If you want to just walk around on your own, if you feel more comfortable that way, then scheduling a visit with the admissions office. This website is like your virtual tour guide. So it will take you in the buildings, take you all throughout campus. Um, the only thing it can't show you right now is the housing, um, but we have lots of ways we can break down housing and what that might look like for you. So you can visit campus on your own. You can go to that visit site and schedule something with the admissions office, or you can take advantage of all of our great virtual opportunities. Please call me or email me if you have any questions. I am your go-to for all things Grand Valley. And I think that about wraps it up. So uh, Michelle can now jump in about SVSU. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Stanley. I'm the Assistant Director of Regional Operations with Saginaw Valley. Can you guys see my screen good? All right, perfect. Um, so Saginaw Valley State University, we are one of the smaller public universities within Michigan. Um, we are actually located smack dab in the middle of the Tri-City area of Bay City, Saginaw, and Midland. So we're about 20 minutes from each city center. We are definitely considered more of a rural campus. We are our own community, but it's literally only a four minute drive to the local Target, to Meyer, to all the restaurants and the mall, movie theaters and whatnot. Um, a lot of my families who are coming from Ohio, when they go up north, they drive right past our campus when they're taking 75 to go up north. So um, I encourage you to come up to campus and visit in the summers. We are open for tours um, Monday through Friday. We have morning and afternoon appointments available and they are actually personal tours. So you'll have your own personal tour guide um, to bring you around campus to check out all the different buildings, the housing facilities and the labs, everything that SVSU has to offer. So Saginaw Valley State University, we actually offer over 100 different undergraduate and graduate degree programs that fall under five different categories. We have our College of Arts and Behavioral Sciences, Business and Management, Education, Health and Human Services, and Science, Engineering, and Technology. Um, some of our most popular programs are probably nursing, social work, which we have one of the largest BSN and BSW programs in the state. Um, engineering is also really popular in addition to education and criminal justice, but just because I didn't mention an area that you're interested in doesn't mean we don't have it. Um, new this year, we also have an environmental science bachelor's degree program that I'm super excited about. It's been a long time coming for that. Um, as far as experience goes, it's really important as all three of us are now going to talk about how important it is for you to prepare yourself for after you graduate from college. And experience is a big component of that. Employers are looking for something beyond your education. And so we have over 84% of our students annually who participate in experiential learning opportunities through internships, um, undergraduate research projects, and whatnot. And so you, you wanna make yourself the most competitive applicant to be entering the workforce. And the way you do that is through volunteering through those um, different opportunities and working with the career services department at the university that you attend. Um, we do have a number one ranked um, formula and racing team um, on the global perspective, which is really cool. And a lot of our engineering students are a part of the team, but you don't have to be an engineering major in order to be a part of our formula one racing team. 
So we are a part of the Division II GLIAC Conference. And the reason I like to highlight our athletics program is because we get a ton of athletes from out of state. It doesn't mean we don't get just the, the typical student who isn't an athlete from out of state, but our coaches love recruiting from out of state and especially in the Midwest region of Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana. We have over 19 different varsity level sports where you could seek out um, earning a scholarship to help you pay for your education. I will tell you though, you are a student athlete. And so it's really important that you focus on your studies because you cannot play if you aren't doing well in school. <laughs> um, so these are just a few pictures of the athletic facilities that we have on our campus. Um, swimming and diving, uh, we hold pretty close to our heart. One of our admissions reps, her daughter was on our swimming and diving team and just recently graduated. And so um, if you ever want to contact someone who has an experience of being a parent of a, a collegiate athlete, I'd be more than happy to get you in contact with Miss Melinda. We do have over 36 different intramural sport leagues as well, which is really fun. Um, and if there's any other any other piece of advice I'd like to share with you, it's all about um, getting involved with experiential learning to help you academically. You wanna get involved in something athletic also because there's something called the freshman 15. And on average, freshmen gain 15 pounds their first year. And in order to fend that off, you gotta get active. So maybe you wanna get involved in intramural sports, club sports, or you're a varsity athlete, or maybe it's just working out at the, the fitness center. Um, for most universities, you don't have to pay a fee to use the fitness center. It's built into your tuition and fees. Um, if you are a junior, you are able to contact coaches and start working on the recruitment process. I am one of the athletic liaisons for our athletics department with the admissions office. So um, I'm working with our athletes and making sure that their admission profile is good to go. Um, so feel free to reach out to me as well if you have questions. Now, Saginaw Valley, we are actually ranked number one in the nation amongst public universities for best on-campus housing and housing experience. And I think a lot of that has to attribute to the fact, one, the facilities piece, and two, there's that, that student life, residential life experience. And the two go hand in hand. When you live on campus, you're more likely to get involved in student life. There's a lot of hustle and bustle going on on campus. Your, your neighbors down the hallway, they're gonna be knocking on your door and saying, hey, there's a movie playing down in the quad or let's go hammocking or play catch outside. Um, you know, let's go to a basketball game. So it's, it's a lot easier to get involved when you live on campus. Um, now, as far as our housing units goes with facilities though, we don't have traditional dorms with community bathrooms. They are all apartment style, anywhere from a studio apartment where your bedroom and living room is one space um, all the way up to a four or five bedroom apartment where you can have a single bedroom with a shared apartment style and then you have two bathrooms that you share with your roommates in addition to kitchens. Um, some of the amenities include like free laundry, you have your hardline internet and your Wi-Fi. Uh, hardline is important for my gamers because you want to make sure you don't have a lag time with your connection. <laughs> and then um, freshmen can have vehicles on campus and there's no extra fee for you to have your vehicle on campus. And our students actually love living on campus so much that we have a waiting list every year for our upperclassmen housing. So I always encourage our upperclassmen to turn in their housing applications as early as possible. Now cost is on the forefront of a lot of people's minds when it comes to investing in your education. And so I really like to point out that Saginaw Valley, we are known as having the lowest tuition in the state of Michigan. And the way that reflects for my out-of-state students is we have something called a red and white award. So when you look at our out-of-state tuition and fees, plus housing and meals and books and supplies, it's about a $36,000 investment or sticker price. And I gasp when I think about that. Now, when you take that total sticker price and then you subtract our, um, our red and white award, which all you need is a 2.5 cumulative GPA in high school to qualify for this red and white award, that significantly reduces what your tuition and fees are to just a little bit more than what our in-state students pay. So it's definitely an incentive for you to, um, you know, get your FAFSA in, get your application in and do well in school. You, you wanna get paid to go to school through scholarships and grants. 
So I did want to show you guys our merit-based scholarships. Now, these are guaranteed when you apply for admission, and they start at a 3.0 GPA, and they go all the way up to a 4.0 and everything in between. Um, we also have a Valley Housing Scholarship for any student who has a 3.0 cumulative GPA or higher. They'll be awarded a $1,500 housing scholarship for as long as they live on campus. We reward students for performing really well on their SAT. So if they have a 1380 or a 31 or higher, um, they'll receive an additional $1,500 for their freshman year. We do have a competitive presidential scholarship. So students would go through um, a, a very selective process. We had almost a thousand applicants for our presidential scholarship and there were 30 finalists that were awarded 100% tuition this year. Um, we also have an opportunity grant that's need-based, and we need your FAFSA on file in order to calculate that for you. And just because you don't receive Pell Grant, that doesn't mean you're not going to receive our opportunity grant. And then we also have private scholarships. So there's lots of ways for you to earn money to help pay for school. So don't ever assume that the cost of your education is going to hold you back from pursuing your degree. Um, you know, if you if you want to ask questions, you, you've got to reach out to us and there's no silly question. Um, now, SVSU, we are enrolling admissions, so we do accept applications throughout the year. So we are still accepting for the class of 2021. Um, for my juniors, you can apply in July if you can remember that rhyme. And then we will start rolling out admissions decisions as early as the end of September. Um, I don't have my contact information on this slide, but I will post it in the chat. And we are going to um, wrap up with me sharing my screen and seeing if there's any questions that anyone might have. I don't see any questions, but I do have to point out that we're all in the same conference for athletics. And so while, while I believe we're friends, and we are, when it comes to those sporting events, sometimes we're rivals. You two more than me and you. That's okay. We got Battle of the Valleys, which it's back. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so. Great. Well, thank you so much to our presenters for taking the time to talk today. Um, I just wanted to put this final slide up um, to let you know that once you close this window, there is a quick survey, a quick four question survey that um, you could take um, just to give us a little bit of feedback. Um, this is the final session for this, uh, for the Ohio State, um, for the Ohio College Fair. So um, feel free to, to log on to um, strivescan.com backslash Ohio to see the recording in the future. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a great day.